I present the, uh, the case study we, de we developed um, within a project, a European project, Transmango. It's about uh, access, land access for new urban food landscape, vision challenges, strategic planning. What does it mean? We, um, in the context of this project, uh, we had several case studies, and uh, uh, one of them is about uh, a sensitive issue now in Rome, which is the land uh, access to land, to public agricultural land, or land suitable for agriculture, in particular by young farmers. I can uh, briefly present uh, the project, which is just finished a few months ago. Uh, Transmango, the main aim of the project, uh, funded under the seventh framework program of the European Union, it was to analyze vulnerability of food systems with regard to the capacity of this of food system to provide food and nutrition security. And um, in this. Uh, uh, we try to uh, analyze factors of vulnerabilities, weak points, and ways in which uh, uh, policy interventions or grassroots initiatives are trying to address these problems. So it was not uh, really focused on urban and peri-urban agriculture, the project as a whole, but our case study was, and the idea was to, to explore these uh, critical points and these possible transition pathways towards higher food and nutrition uh, security uh, through a range of case studies. These are the countries where the project was carried out. Uh, so you see Northern and Southern Europe, East and West Europe. And uh, in particular, our case study, of course, in Rome, was about social mobilization for access to land by young farmers in the metropolitan area of Rome. Uh, so we, we try to, not, of course, to describe the state of art of uh, agriculture, uh, urban and peri-urban agriculture in Rome, and the institutional context, and the social movements, and so on. Uh, and then we focus our analysis on uh, this uh, specific social mobilization and network of our activists that were able, was able to raise interest of the people and address also municipality and other policy makers. It's quite a successful experience. A few words about the, the situation in Rome. I don't know if you, if you know about this, but uh, the municipality of Rome is quite peculiar. It's by far the largest municipality in Italy, and I think also in Europe. Um, and. Uh, it's also a rural municipality. It's strange to say for you know, the capital city of a Western country with three million inhabitants, uh, but it, uh, it's the largest uh, rural municipality in Italy. Why? For two reasons in particular. One is that, as you see, the, the orange part is uh, actually the so-called Agro Romano, the Roman countryside. But it's, uh, nevertheless, it belongs to the Roman municipality. And the green areas inside, the gray areas are the, the built part of the city. But as you see, there are also many green areas within the city. These are um, other green areas, not, not uh, agricultural areas as uh, officially defined. But nevertheless, some of these areas are farmed or are suitable for farming. You have also villas, historical villas, parks, protected areas. But you have also areas suitable for agriculture for urban gardening, but also for urban agriculture in professional terms. So this created big potential. You see here the, the dimension of, uh, I think, quite old data, but nevertheless, you see the surface of Rome municipality vis-a-vis -vis other large municipalities in, uh, in Europe, and the not built surface, also is uh, by far the largest uh, in Europe, this depends also, as I told you, but, uh, on the, the structure of the municipality, which covers a lot of countries at the right, which gives Roman municipality great potential, of course, on influencing uh, agriculture and urban and pre urban agriculture. And this is also a great potential because Rome has a strong tradition of uh, pre urban production, often informal, 
Um, so beyond, behind, you say, before the current, um, you know, interest, renewed interest for these uh, sustainable led initiatives, urban farming, social farming, and so on. This is something more traditional, um, which is led. This tradition is linked to the uh, movement towards Rome of people used to live in the countryside in the 30s, in the 50s, which kept their tradition to farm some plots of land, often informally. And we also have a strong tradition of uh, short chains, local markets, and uh, street markets, which give, gives potential to agricultural farmers, of course. So this is actually the uh, case study that we really addressed. Since 2011, a group uh, of young farmers already far working in uh, some uh, farming cooperatives or business, or wannabe farmers who wanted to enter this uh, field of activity, created the Roman Network for Land Access. They organized uh, flash mobs, they established a network with um, environmental bodies, um, farmers organizations, existing farms, and they were able to uh, have contacts with the local authorities on one side, so called an institutional approach, but also to raise public interest with demonstrations, flash mobs, and so on. And uh, the, the, the catalyst of this uh, mobilization was the Vertenza the dispute. It was a document, kind, kind of a declaration of statements, in which those uh, activists stated the, the points, their aims, uh, and the framework, the cultural and social framework in which they uh, frame their activity. It was actually quite successful because also thanks to this mobilization, we had two tenders um, in uh, spring 2014, one issued by the Regional Agency for Agricultural Development and the other by the Municipality of Rome. And the result was, at the moment, 10 farmland units have been assigned for 15 years renewable for about 400 hectares in total. Um, the ones of the municipality, about 100 hectares, completely belong to the municipality of Rome. Uh, the others are also in the province of Rome and even uh, a bit uh, more uh, in other provinces. But most of these 400 hectares, about 320, I think, they belong to the municipality or to the province of Rome, which is, anyway, by the functional point of view, is uh, still within the <coughs> Roman uh, sphere of influence and uh, working and uh, trade basing. And these are some features about the mobilization. You see flash mobs. Actually, in this picture, there are not so many people, but there were even more people in other events. Uh, this is the network that, uh, they created. Uh, the, the two in red are the um, farm, uh, farms, cooperative farms, established in the 70s, where these young farmers, most of them, the most proactive ones, started their activity. But then they wanted to move to become individual or to have their own farm, so they created a network. It's interesting from a social political point of view because these two farms were established in the 70s, um, in the late 70s, under the umbrella of uh, the safeguard of uh, Roman countryside flag, the flag. More than actually working and uh, making a business out of farming, which was also important, but the idea was to safeguard, to occupy lands in order to prevent the building sector to cover everything around Rome. Uh, if you like, a left-wing political uh, orientation, did, you know, the late 70s was a specific moment, and they still, they became now fully professional farms, but they still retain this kind of endeavor and uh, if you see the beginning of the Vertenza, this document, it is called Vertenza for the Safeguard of the Agro Roman, of the Roman countryside. So the focus was not job opportunities in agriculture, was not food production or short chain, short food chain creation. They were actually the core of the, of the initiative, but not in the title, you see. And the quotation by Mahatma Gandhi is just to say that. They, these activists really want to frame their mobilization in a wider context. Thanks. Our case study objectives 
was, uh, first of all, to analyze the aims of the characters, of course, of the mobilization, but also, in an actual research perspective, to support the stakeholders' mobilization and uh, the activist mobilization and the dialogue with the administration and with other experts and other actors through a workshop, a participated workshop. And now I spend a few last minutes of the presentation just to present, I think, it was, it was an interesting two days workshop, which can be replicated elsewhere. We had the same structure in all the other case studies in the northern and the other countries. Some of them related, for example, to, um, to short chains, uh, um, street markets, food assistance, uh, social farming, and so on. And in all the cases, we had some this uh, structure and uh, the, uh, of a workshop. With, uh, we invited all the stakeholders, main activists in particular, but also experts and policymakers, and we first asked them, think in terms of your desirable future, the ideal scenario for your activity, for urban access uh, to land, to farming land, and uh, uh, urban agriculture in 2030, in 15 years from now. And, uh, through post-its and so on, everybody wrote what they wanted, what they thought it was elements of an ideal scenario. We gathered together, we voted the most, the key elements, and this was the ideal scenario. Then we uh, we made a kind of ideal backcasting. So how can we achieve those these ideal scenario? Through which steps? And uh, you see. 2030 here, present time here, and the idea was a backcasting in the sense that we uh, ask uh, the participants, first of all say, we ask, in order to achieve this target, what is required? Something here. And what is required to do this? Something before, and before, and before. This is the idea of backcasting. Uh, why? Because the idea was to, to be creative, to start from the, from the heaven, for the desire, okay, realistic heaven, of course, and uh, see what was possible, and, uh, oh, and analyze and find some bottlenecks, some critical points here. This was the first part of the work. In the second part, we received by European, at the European level, uh, the same project, uh, other partners, developed four scenarios. In this case, realistic scenarios, not ideal type. Um, and we, together with uh, our activists, just, just to make you understand, some were business as usual, or back to the countryside because of the crisis, or great technological advancement in uh, sustainability and uh, interest in social uh, sustainability and the environmental sustainability, and so on. We downscale these scenarios, and okay, there are again a lot of post-its, and we, uh, we have, I think we had a great environmental impact with all this. She <laughs> to you, but it, anyway, these are the two scenarios. I don't spend any time because I'm running out of time. And the idea was then to, to develop a scenario robust, robust strategic plan. So the first one that I showed before, 2030 and the current time, was what is required to achieve this ideal scenario. But then, which of uh, these elements of the ideal scenario and which of these steps, how to get there, are still compatible uh, with the, the, the various scenarios that are possibly developed. And this is the result, one of the results. And you see in the blue arrow the elements of uh, the downscaled ideal scenario. Ideal scenario tested after the European realistic scenarios, possible scenarios. The challenges at present, and then the other steps. So we start from one step. And we have the backcasting, what is required to... We have here independent columns, but uh, actually in, the, in other cases we had... Uh, some, some steps are in common. And this is the very last point I want to, to mention. Uh, that uh, uh, some steps are in common. First of all, I want to say that despite the 15-year the scenario projected, all the participants were very rooted in current challenges. Uh, they, they face problems. Also, the people who had the land assigned, they are facing a lot of problems um, with, uh, for example, f financial support, condition of the soil, uh, contacts with the local administration, 
uh, problems that uh, the, when you start farming, then when you actually receive a profit, it, it, it lasted two, three hours and people are not able to survive and so on. So they were really rooted in uh, current challenges. And more or less, they all agree, in, according to the different, uh, for all the different uh, elements of this ideal scenario, that there was those needs. First of all, recognition of the state of art, because little is known, we have different administrations, mm -hmm. coordination of administration is related to this, um, <coughs> different administrations in charge of land uh, management, in charge of environmental protection, short chains, agriculture, pre-urban, urban, pre -urban agriculture, and one administration does not know what the others are doing. Information sharing, training and financial support for farmers. These was uh, the uh, common points shared by all participants. And the very last slide, in more general terms, the idea is that land access is still a bottleneck for the development of small-scale participative agricultural and food-related initiative. Uh, there, was a, there is a big need of uh, administrative coordination and support after the, 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 the land plot are assigned and also to keep the eyes open on the land which is still suitable for new assignment because there are a lot of uh, uh, wannabe farmers still waiting for new tenders or for those tenders to be uh, renewed. And uh, the, the, the last point I want to address is that, well, mm, that those farmers are really willing to establish a network of uh, activities uh, looking at social and environmental sustainability also because they know that Roman uh, consumers, uh, Rome create a big uh, potential, gives a big potential for consu consuming those products even the, if they uh, can be a bit more costly than others, if they are, of course, charged with values in terms of social farming, sustainability, safeguarding of uh, the Roman countryside with all the historical heritage and, uh, and uh, environmental heritage. And they, ac they actually see the, their farming activity has a, a, an element of a broader political change in Rome. They think that they can be successful also in business terms as long as they are able to connect their activity to wider social and political uh, movements and uh, initiatives.